Since my last video, I've been busy finishing our bathroom renovation. I've tiled the floor and walls, done the painting and fitted the shower. So in this video, I'll make a mirror cabinet and I'll also install the vanity and sink that I made in previous videos. Here's the mirror that I'll use for the cabinet. I couldn't find just the plain mirror in this shape anywhere. After spending far too long locking, I decided to use this one, but first I need to remove the mirror from the frame. I could just use it like this, but it will be better if I can get the adhesive off. I tested Terps, which doesn't affect the mirror backing, but it does soften the adhesive, so I'll give that a go. It's a shame I couldn't have just bought one, but anyway, it cleaned up fine, so next I'll start the cabinet. For that I'll use the same wood I used for the vanity to match it and that skimpy mess mate. To begin with I'll mill the top, bottom and sides of the cabinet. To connect the corners I'll use some thicker stock as I'll cut curves in that to match the shape of the mirror. To join the sides to the corners, I'll use splines. So the first thing I'll do is cut some grooves in both sides of each joint. While I'm doing that, I'll take the opportunity to thank every one of you who bought one of my marking darts and took advantage of the offers. I really appreciate the support. I just wanted to let anyone know who would still like to grab one that they're still available. Simply click the link in the description to check out my Pask Makes Marking Knife. And as always, thanks for the support. That's the grooves cut, so next I'll cut some splines. I'll take light passes on the drum sander to get the boards to just the right thickness. Because I don't have a flat tooth blade for my table saw, I'll remove the small V in the bottom of the groove. I'll do that manually with a chisel and that actually didn't take too long to do at all. Next I'll start shaping and rounding the corners. I'll mark them out and then start removing some of the waste. The outsides will be easy enough to shape after the cabinet has been assembled but the insides will be more difficult so I'll get those a bit closer to the line. Next I'll cut the splines then I can do a dry fit before moving on to the next stage. That's looking good and the main thing is it's the same size as the mirror so next I'll cut some shelves. I've decided to space them out going from the largest section at the bottom, getting smaller between the shelves as they go up. The bottom section will have a wall outlet in it, we'll use that for charging toothbrushes and that's why it's the tallest one. I'll cut dados for the shelves to fit into and I'll do that with a super simple setup. 
I'd made a square from a couple of pieces of scrap, which I've already run the router through. I can use the router cut out in that to line up to my marks. That works great and the setup doesn't get much easier. I just need to chisel out the ends after marking them with a marking knife. Now I can cut the shelves down to the correct length and do another dry fit. I'm not far away from gluing the cabinet together, but first I need to cut a rebate on both sides of the cabinet for panels to fit into. One side will be for the back panel and the other one will be for the door. I'm only cutting rebates on the straight pieces for now, but I will cut rebates on the inside corner pieces after it's been assembled and I'll do that with a router bit. The panels fit nicely, but somewhere along the way I went wrong with the depth of the shelves. It's an easy fix though, I cut some strips off camera from the shelf off cuts and I'll glue those on next. I sanded the inside of all the flat pieces ready for glue up, which I'll do next. Glue ups are never much fun, but that went pretty well. Next I'll sand the inside corners. I don't have a bobbin sander, which would have been ideal. So I'll use this flap sander or whatever you call it in the cordless drill. I really didn't need to take too much off. Now that's done, I can route the rebates on the inside of the corners. I needed to sand them first so the router can follow the finished shape. Next I'll finish shaping the outside corners, again keeping it simple using a 40 grit disc on the orbital sander. It did a great job and did it in no time at all, even with the wood being super dense. I smoothed it out with an 80 grit disc, but I'll do some more sanding later on. Now that the main framework is done, I'll cut the panels out to 12 mm lightweight plywood. I couldn't find any nice veneered plywood locally, so I decided to use this plywood and just paint it. I didn't want to use just regular paint though, as I thought that would look a bit average. So I decided after undercoating it to try pearlescent paint, which I haven't used before. I tried brushing the paint out with different strokes for different effects, but I really didn't like it whichever way I tried. So the next morning I decided to flip them over and for the back panel, I'll glue on some laminate that I already have, which I think will look great. And for the back of the door, I'll just varnish the plywood. I don't think that will look amazing, but I can live with it being on the back. 
Laminate is very easy to use. All I do is coat both surfaces with contact adhesive. I'm using a foam roller, which I haven't used for this before, and it worked great. I leave it five minutes to dry it, then line the laminate up with the board and press it on. The sides that I painted would have needed sealing anyway, so that job's already done. I reckon that looks awesome and very professional looking. Next I'll put a few coats of varnish on the back of the door and the cabinet as well. To glue the door panel in I'll use this clear construction adhesive. It won't make too much of a mess when it squeezes out and it cleans up easily with turps. While that's setting, I'll install the vanity and the sink from my previous videos. I won't go into too much detail, but you should get the gist of what's happening, and I'll start by drilling some holes for the pipe work. To keep the feet off the ground, I've cut these pieces of plexiglass, which I'll silicon around later on. I needed to cut a section out of the divider so the waste trap can fit and I always knew that this may have to be done. I connected the hose and the waste off camera and here it is with the drawers in place. Back to the cabinet and now I'll cut the door off on the table saw. Next I'll sand the edges smooth and varnish them and I'll also put a couple more coats over the whole thing. Using water-based varnish is great as it doesn't take too long to dry between coats. I've got a couple of ideas for opening the door. One would be to carve a recess on the underside of the door. That would work for opening it but I think there'd be a tendency to touch the mirror and leave fingerprints when closing it. So instead I've prepared this piece of wood off camera and I'll use that to make a handle. I'll chop it into the back of the door using a router and a chisel to clean it up.
For the hinges, I'll use this type here, which are great for a cabinet like this. They work nicely, but they can also be adjusted in each direction, and that's why I like them. First, I need to glue on a couple of thin pieces of wood as the door isn't quite thick enough. Before I attach them, I'll glue on the mirror and leave it overnight to set. The back panel needs an opening for the electrical outlet, so I'll do that now and then glue the panel into the cabinet. There was some squeeze out again, but cleaned up easily enough. Next, I'll fit the hinges and attach the door, and then I can install the cabinet into the bathroom. I'll take the door off to install the cabinet and I'll drill some holes ready to mount it. I spent a few minutes knocking together a stand to make the process easier. I'll mark through the mounting holes and then I can drill through the tiles with the diamond drill. The diamond drill works awesome, it needs to stay wet though and that's why I put plastic down first. It takes about a minute or so to go through these porcelain tiles. I'm using stainless steel screws and the middle one on the top and bottom goes straight into a stud so the cabinet is well secured. And there it is, we're all super happy with it. I'm especially pleased to get the bathroom done as it's taken up a lot of my time so now I can get back to making more videos. I think the projects I made for this bathroom renovation, the vanity, the sink and the mirror all look fantastic together. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.